we are joined now by Wang Shui Wen, a political analyst who is also the former deputy chief of the International Business Daily. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us today. Um, tell us the significance of deliberating election methods for Hong Kong's uh, chief executive and legislature. The deliberation of the election law of Hong Kong is of great significance. You know, before the election of the chief executive of Hong Kong was not done directly. It was uh, the person, the chief ex uh, uh, executive, was elected indirectly. From, 90, from 2017, we planned to, well, to change that to direct election. All voters vote the chief executive. One vote, one voter. That will be a great progress. But on the way towards this progress, there are some obstacles. There are some people in Hong Kong, they call the pan Dam sect, I would like to say. And they propose that the candidates of the chief executive should be nominated by the voters themselves directly. Actually, that's against the basic law of Hong Kong. You know, the basic law of Hong Kong plays the role of a constitution in Hong Kong. And according to the stipulation of the 45th article of the basic law, and the candidates of the chief executive should be nominated by the nomination group. And uh, over 50% of all the members will agree to the nomination, then the person can be nominated. And uh, whatever you do, whatever you say, you must do and say that within the framework of the basic law. And uh, under the general principle of one country, two systems, and uh, in the principle of one country, two systems, in my opinion, one country plays the dominating role. Without the principle of one country, there's no point to talk about two systems. And uh, some people say uh, their proposal is in line with the international practice. So far as I know, there's no international standard for elections. For instance, in the United States, the president is not the elected directly. The prime minister of Britain is the leader of the party within the parliament. is also not elected directly. And each country, each region has its specific conditions. So uh, I think this is uh, a matter of principle for China. And uh, I don't think they will have their way. And by the way, the majority of the Hong Kong people are also against some violations of the basic law. For instance, uh, some people threaten to occupy the medium ring road. And that will cause the collapse of traffic and social life in Hong Kong. It's not a good idea. Yeah, that's my comment. Well, the amendments to the budget law are expected to be passed to, uh, today. What are some of the challenges that we could expect? Uh, well, that's a big step forward. You know, before, the budget of China was drawn up by the government and mainly implemented by the government and the National People's Congress played, in, I won't say it also played some role, but insignificant role. Now, as part of the major reform, and in future, uh, if the law, the, the budget law is uh, well revised and uh, will be passed, I think uh, there is no problem for its passing because the fourth reading is all, has already been out. And, uh, the Congress will play a big role. So the budget, the drawing up of the budget and the implementation of the budget will be under strict supervision and guidance of the National People's Congress. And the National People's Congress represent the people, represent the Chinese taxpayers. And this reform is also, will also play a very good role in combating corruption and all those sort of things. And uh, that is also in line with the scientific outlook on development. I think with, well, the budget law revised and passed, and China, development of Chinese economy, 
will be on a healthy road. All right, we'll have to end it there. Wang Shuo Wayne, thank you very much for joining us today.